My name is Gail Randolph. August 29th of 2009, I walked into the Tennessee State Library Archives for the first time ever. Upon walking into these doors, it changed my life forever. I was connected to my family. It was a quest. There was a lady sitting behind me, Miss Robinson, and she kept saying uh, to me, she said, are you here looking for your family? And I said, no. At the third time of asking me, am I looking for my family, I turned to Miss Robinson and I said, uh, what are you talking about? And she said, this is a book from Rutherford County. And she pulled us out of wills, inventories of Rutherford County, and she showed me her family one word in the book. So I asked her, how do you get this information? How do you know that's your great-great-grandfather, whoever he is, to you? She said, well, I have the deed, and here's a list of him in the book. So at that moment, I knew I was destined to find myself looking for my family in this archives. We are uh, standing in uh, Nashville City Cemetery opened in 1822. In this place, uh, the city buried uh, its dead, including African Americans, slaves, and free Negroes. And for a person uh, looking for their family history and genealogy, and they believe uh, they had some connection to Nashville before the Civil War, uh, the Nashville City Cemetery is a good place to start. This cemetery, like many cemeteries, has a register. Uh, so you are registered in birth, at birth, and also we are registered at death. And you can use the register to locate who's in the cemetery, and in most cases, what section of the cemetery, and the tombstone number, as many cemeteries will have a number on a tombstone. So a cemetery is a great place for studying genealogy and family history because sometimes the tombstone is the only record you have of when they were born and when they died. My quest was to find the Randolph's slaves and where they came from, their beginnings. Peggy Size and June Dorman. Dorman. They came by and they saw me on the computer and they said, who are you looking for? I said, the Randolph family. Miss June said, oh, I know all about the Randolphs. And I said, oh, are you gonna help me? <laughs> and she said, no, you gotta learn how to do it yourself. <laughs> she said, you start with yourself and you go back. That's how we're gonna do this. And she said, no, you'll learn, you'll learn. I knew that my family was from Rutherford County so I started with the wheels, deeds, bills of sales, court minutes, funeral records, and the historical society books. Okay, after I went through the books, I came across uh, a family. It said African Americans in Rutherford County right here and when I opened up this book I realized someone had already did a picture story of my family of the rent of the of the Jatons, the Childress, the Butlers, the Williams and I saw my grandmother in this book it's like oh okay so I'm finding my family so when I found my grandmother Lady Bertha Williams I knew that this is the right family. So I was working on the Randolph family. So this is my grandfather, Reverend A.H.L. Randolph's wife, Lady Bertha Jaton Williams. Most counties are required by state to keep uh, four different types of vital statistics, and marriages is one of those. Marriages, um, birth and death, and wills are great places to start, and of course deeds. Those things are sort of the bedrock of the county records. One thing we happen to have here uh, is the obituaries. Uh, we just clip the newspaper 
uh, obituary notice. So that's what we're pulling now is uh, Alan Randolph, who was her grandfather. grandfather. And obituaries are very valuable because they sometimes they will list the pallbearers, who are usually relatives or good friends, or they'll list the surviving, the widow, whoever survives. They give you a lot of, of family information in there, and they tell you a little bit about the person. Well, this is my grandfather's uh, obituary, brief obituary that they had written here in Nashville, Tennessee. He died in Louisville, Kentucky in 1986. But it speaks about where he was raised, his parents, uh, his siblings, and his two other wives after my grandmother, Lady Bertha. And the Civil District is what guides you into the census manuscript. Then you can use uh, city uh, directories for that area try to see if you can find the person. The Freeman's Bureau, founded by Congress in March of 1865, one of its tasks is to go out and record slave marriages, make them legal, put them in the county records, because in slavery, uh, of course, they were not legally married. I was still searching for the Randolph slaves and I came to the censor books for the Rutherford County, and they're listed here for Rutherford County beginning in 18, 1810 all the way up to 1920. And these are the Rutherford County censor books. I checked these out trying to locate the Black Randolphs after 1865. Then I went to, we have censor, we have mortality books. The mortality books, Tennessee has for 1880, 1860, and 1850. No matter what race, they are, you are listed in the mortality book. I went to the 1860 slave book and checked out the Randolph's slaves and the ages. Uh, in the slave book, you'll see the age, the race, complexion, or whatever. If it's mulatto, black, or Negro, it'll be listed. No names, just ages and sex. Very interesting book that I found in Rutherford County. It's the death certificate from 1914 to 1925. And in this book is where I found my grandfather's father's father. His name was Anderson Randolph. We're in the microfilm room plus the reading room for different states. I was sitting at the table listening to them and I was asking June and and uh, Peggy, how do you, how can I find the slaves? I can't find them. I can't find the slaves. I can't find uh, Will, D, Bill of Sales. So they directed me, they said, well, you need to look in the wills of the daughter instead of the sons. Because they said that daughters were usually given the slaves. What I did, I came to Rutherford County. I knew that I had to find anything and everything that happened before 1870. There are stories about all of our families up until presently 1960. These are the death and birth records from 1881 to 1882. Okay, this is the Rutherford County Historical Society publication number 35. So as I was going through all the books, this is the last book that I came to. And I looked at the index and I was looking for the Randolphs. The Randolphs. So when I came up on the Randolphs, I knew that we were living in the house in the plantation of Beverly Randolph. And this is his mother Mary, brothers and sisters, and sister-in-laws. So I looked at these numbers and I said, this is kind of interesting here. And I say each one of these have numbers behind them, 1306, 1587. And I said, 1306 here uh, behind her son's name. So I said, let me check out the rest of the book. So as I was going through the back, that's when I came upon the slave names in the back of the book. So I came across Betty, because I knew that Betty was one of the slaves, and I saw that her number was 1306. That matches Mary Randolph. So I went through the whole back of the Bible that I have, 
and I saw that all the names were listed in this book. So I went to section 1306 in this in the book. And 1306 says, an inventory of Mary Randolph, October turn, 1827. And there's the executive, Be Beverly Randolph. And here is Jacob and Betty. You can look in Virginia books. The Randolphs came from Virginia, so that's how I figured out uh, the Randolphs came from Virginia. So I started from A, sit down on this floor here every day, went through every county trying to locate Mary Randolph. And I knew that she was Mary Randolph Jones. When I finally got to Bronswick County, Virginia, and this is volume three, book five, 1780 to 1795. And this is where I found Mary Jones' father's will. His name was Peter Jones. I'm thinking this is a gold mine. I got, I got a big rush, like, okay, I'm going back in time, and this is my family. So I've passed the Randolph name, which was a joy to know, not because we weren't Randolphs, but it was a joy to know that, hey, I'm going back in time, and I'm doing it by myself with the help of the women and the workers here. But when I found Mary Randolph name in the book, I knew I was on the right track. And there is the name of Jacob, and there is the name of Betty, daughter of Molly. So he gave, Peter Jones gave his daughter Mary several slaves, but he kept the family intact. So this right here is furthermore evidence of the proof of the Bible and Mary Randolph's inventory when she died in 1827 in Rutherford County. This is a copy of the Randolph Bible. On the back of it, it says Negroes. And there's Jacob and Betty. And this is Jim, born 1799. That is their son. So I made sure that I was here every day and I searched every book to locate my family. And this is a copy of Mary Randolph Jones' inventory when she passed. And she also lists the same name that's in the will book of her father's that was a gift to her. So I have the Bible, the will book of Peter Jones, and the inventory of Mary Randolph to match. Plus, I have the historical documents from Rutherford County with the slave names and the owner names in it to match. So I have four proofs of my ancestors. Back to 1720. I came to Jeannie at the Family History Center in Rivergate to, act, to seek help in helping me find the family slaves on the back of the Bible. Peter Jones, and he has a will, page three, three, will number 317. This is a copy of the original will that Jeannie obtained for me, and it's the will of Peter Jones, and it's dated 1795. What is that, Brunswick County, Virginia? Brunswick. Peter Jones is the father of Mary Jones Randolph, who is the mother of Beverly Randolph, the Randolph Plantation, or the Riverside Plantation in Rutherford County. They were the owners of the Randolphs, of my Randolph. My quest and my journey was a pleasant and great journey. I traveled from 1950 to 1720. It took me seven months, and I enjoyed every moment of it. And when I came into this building, I did not expect to find the history that I found I found birth dates and mothers and fathers and relatives on both sides of family. The name Randolph is just the owner's name and that Jones is my real name. That is a thrill. It's satisfying. I'm excited about to find out who I am. And it's a fulfilling experience to know who you really are.